Hey everyone and welcome back to Bikini Bottom. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to use Matil UI icons in Matil UI V5, which is the newest version of Matil UI. We're going to talk about how to use the icons, but also how to make your own SVG icons that are compatible with sort of the Matil UI props, as well as use the icon button component, which goes hand in hand. And chances are, if you are ever going to make a complete uh, website out of Matil UI, you will probably at some point have to use the icons library. Library. I personally think it's really well done, one of my favorites from any UI library. And if you found value in this video, please remember to leave a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm to get these videos out there to more and more people, and it means a lot to me and the channel. So let's jump straight into it. The first thing you're going to have to know is that the actual library that you can use all these buttons from is separate from the Material UI library that you might have already installed. So you're going to go ahead and have to install MPMI. Um, um, at MUI slash icons dash material. Now I have a code sandbox that I have forked from the Mutual UI um, documentation and I've sort of modified it around just to make it a bit easier uh, to understand. And you can see here that we already have it as a um, dependency right over here, MUI slash icons material. And I'm using version 5.5, which of course is compatible with 5.5 of material UI as a whole. So now that you have that, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to go to this page on material UI's documentations, which I will have in the description, as well as all the other links to everything else in this video. And you can go ahead and they have over, I believe, 2,065 uh, different icons to choose from. And not only that, but each one of these icons has a different variant. For example, if we were just looking at alarm clocks, you can see just in the alarm clocks alone, you can get sort of a filled version, you can get an outline version, and this might be a bit of a bad example because um, it's not actually changing too much for the alarm clock, but maybe let's, for example, get the notification uh, bell. So we can see here there's a filled one and then there's an outlined one over here. We can have a two-toned one and a sharp one. And in this documentation page, uh, Material UI sort of gives you an idea of what it, each one of these variants uh, looks like. Um, but all you have to do, first of all, search up what you're looking for. So let's say, for example, we're looking for a trash can icon. We're going to see that there are a lot of different ones to, um, to be uh, pulled from. So let's just go ahead and say we want to use a standard delete icon. Now, you can go ahead, if you're only using like one or two icons, you can fully just default import it from the subdirectory within the icon material folder, um, just like this. Or if you are, for example, using like five different icons on a page, a cleaner way to do it is just import them all from icon material and just add the squiggly braces around your import to show that it's actually um, not a default export, but um, something that's coming from inside of this folder instead. So if you're importing, you know, like 10 different icons, it might make sense Sense to do all of them uh, just like that so that you're not you know you don't have 10 different lines for each one of those uh, exports but now we're gonna go ahead and um, look at what a default icon actually will give you so you can go ahead and see that each one of them is sort of uh, default imported as the name of the icon I'm gonna go ahead and refresh over here there we go so you can see here all we have is a very simple icon and it's just the delete icon the two props that you will find yourself using on actual icons are probably going to be the color and the size. And if we go to the actual prop list for um, icons, you can see that there are a couple of different things that we can pass in. Some of them are common to almost every single material UI component that you don't have to worry about. Things like children, classes, component. Um, SX, which we talked about in the last video, but you also have um, the two that are mostly used on icon components, which is the color and the font size. Now, the color can be sort of any of these default colors that will come within the Material UI theme. And if you're not too familiar with the theme, I have a video on it as well, but essentially the theme is sort of just like a standardized color set palette that comes with every Material UI component. And unless you override it, it's going to be the same for all of these components. So right now I've set the color on this icon, um, I set the color prop to primary, and that's just going to be this sort of blue color. If I were to remove it, I believe the default is just going to be inherit, so it'll turn out to be some sort of either black or gray color. And the next prop you have is the size prop. So you can see here that there are a couple of different sizes. 
Um, in fact, I actually passed it wrong. It's actually called font size. So if I change this to font size large, there you go, it'll actually uh, go big. And if I uh, set it to small, it'll go back to small. And I believe the default was medium, uh, which it was at when I had the wrong prop name in it. Um, but you can pretty much set it to any of these uh, sizes, large, medium, small. And that's pretty much all there is to icons. For every single icon, you're just gonna search up which one you want. If I were to, for example, go for the outlined one and uh, get the delete outline, you can see that it actually comes from a different part of that folder. Um, so I can go ahead and maybe, you know, let's generalize uh, the import again. All right, so there we have it. So it turns out if you are doing uh, this import, um, you actually have to delete the icon at the end of the name uh, before you uh, uh, do it. The default export, you can name it whatever. So in the examples, they named it delete icon. But when you are actually importing it from the actual library, you have to just take the name without uh, the icon in it like they show in the examples. But we now have our two different variants of the same trash can rendered. And you can see that we can change any of the same components or any of the same props for both of these components. So that doesn't change. Now, another cool thing to understand um, with the Material UI icons library is sort of the idea that you can pass in your own SVG and sort of make it an icon. So for this, I'm just gonna go through their example. You can see that they pretty much um, have an SVG icon of a house and they wrap it in their SVG icon component. And that component will allow you to treat that entire um, SVG as a regular material UI component. And what that means is you will be able to, uh, just like you did before, pass in the same props to modify the color and whatnot and the size of the SVG as if it was from the material UI library. And the reason for this is because SVGs are pretty customizable. They're not like standard images. Of course, most people will already know that, um, but it's really cool that, uh, that material UI actually allows their SVG icon uh, component to modify those things within it. So even if you're using custom SVGs, you can still make them part of your design library with Material UI. And you can also customize the size like I mentioned. Another cool thing to note is that you can pass in the SX prop, which I just talked about. But in that SX prop, let's say, for example, if I wanted to change the color to something custom, and this goes for both regular Material UI icons and SVG icons, you can pass in the XS prop. And in there, I can just set the color to either any theme I want or just any regular um, uh, CSS color um, that comes with it, like for example, red, and it will change that SVG to that color. So if you're trying to make the color something that isn't in your actual theme, uh, the color prop probably won't work for that and you can pass in a custom uh, through the SX prop. Now let's talk about the icon button. The icon button is actually in the button side of Material UI's documentation, even though in my opinion, I think it would fit more with the icon side of things. All the icon button does is it allows you to wrap your icon in sort of a buttony looking thing so that when you click it, you actually get some sort of feedback. So as you, as you can see, if I were to click this regular icon, nothing really happens to the, uh, that the user sees at least. If you were to add an on-click handler, of course it would still run, but there's no sort of feedback to the user that it has been clicked. And the icon button, is sort of the, uh, oops, let's change that in here. The icon button is sort of the solution uh, from Material UI for that. So for example, um, once this loads, there we go. I don't know why Code Sandbox is taking so long today to re-render, but you can see here, as I am clicking it, there's sort of like a little ripply effect and you can see there's a background when I hover over it. It just adds a nice touch for any users that are clicking on your buttons, expecting some sort of output. It at least gives validation that it is being clicked. Now, there are a couple of different props you can pass into this one. Some of them are the same, for example, color. Now, it's important to note that the color that you pass into this icon button will actually affect the icon underlying, especially if the default is inherent. So for example, if if I come back to this example, the color right now is not being passed in for the icon and the default is in here, which means it will just take it from the parent upwards. If I were to change this color equal to primary, let's go ahead and save that. You can see that the actual color of the icon changes as well as a bit of the color of the rippling, which is a lot less noticeable. But if I wanted the ripple color to change, but the, uh, the color of the icon not to change, I could set the color of the icon to something different. Um, I believe secondary for the default theme is just sort of like a purple. 
and there you go. So the color of that is purple, but when I click it, the color of the uh, ripple effect from the icon button is actually blue. And the same thing applies here uh, for the font size. If I were to change the, uh, the font size to inherit um, in the icon itself, and then in the icon button, change it to large, for example, you'll see both the icon button gets large and the icon itself will get large. Whereas I could have a really big, um, you know, icon button <laughs> outline and a very small icon. So that's pretty much it when it comes for icons and um, icon buttons. There is some more comprehensive documentation if you want the real, real, uh, 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 very complicated use cases, I should say, that I've never had a use for in all my time using Rito UI, and I don't think much other people have. Uh, but if you're really interested in learning everything there is to learn, I will also link the documentation of that down below as well. And if you found value, make sure you leave a comment and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.